For this video, I'm featuring a genus of spider that you've almost certainly seen in your home. The genus is Steatoda, but I will focus on perhaps the most common in the family, Steatoda triangulosa. Steatoda triangulosa is also known as the triangulate cobweb spider, the triangulate combfoot, the triangulate bud spider, and sometimes just cobweb spider. It is named for the triangle-shaped pattern on the dorsal side of its abdomen. These are the little spiders you find in the corners of your home, such as under furniture and sometimes in the corners of walls and ceilings, and also around windows. They are typically seen in their webs, which are irregular tangles of sticky silken fibers. You might also see these spiders when sweeping, especially near baseboards where they might become entangled in broom fibers, especially the youngest, smallest individuals. While sweeping, you may see them scamper away from a pile of dust after they are swept out from the corners where they hide. You may have also seen their pea-sized egg sacs, which appear as tiny translucent cotton balls attached to walls or under furniture. Well, the egg sacs may be a little smaller than peas. Steatota spiders are not aggressive and prefer to stay out of the way. For the most part, these spiders just want to remain out of the way and feed on insects and other spiders that may wander into your home. Like nearly all spiders, they do have a bit of venom, but a bite is not enough to be dangerous to humans. I've read that they are capable of biting, but they are so small, I would imagine it would need to be a location where the skin is very thin. As far as I can tell, there has only been one documented bite or envenomation, and I can say that after handling these spiders hundreds of times, I've never had any issues. In the past, I've witnessed a behavior by one of these spiders that I found quite interesting. The spider was a large female that made her home in the corner of a bathroom where the ceiling and two walls came together. She spent the winter there, and I wanted to observe her and see how she would survive without much food as most insects are dormant during the colder months. I never did see her eat, and she did lose some weight, although she remained rather rotund. But I noticed something one day that she would do every day throughout the winter. Each time the shower was activated and steam would rise to the ceiling, she would become active and travel around her web. At first, I wondered if her elevated energy level was due to the warmth from the steam. But upon further and closer observation, it was clear that she was consuming moisture that had accumulated on the web. I found that very interesting. Additionally, she would occasionally repair her web, so I think it was a combination of taking advantage of the steam to hydrate and also to get work done while it was warmer. Steatoda are part of the cobweb spider family, and there are well over 100 species around the world. Steatota triangulosa are quite small, with females growing to about one-fourth of an inch, legs not included, while males are a bit smaller. They have bulbous abdomens, like black widows, but are brownish-orange and beige overall. The dorsal side of the abdomen is beige, but there are two brownish zigzag lines running front to back, which gives it the triangle-shaped pattern it is known for. The common house spider, Parasteatota tepidariorum, is smaller in size and appearance to the triangulate comb foot, but has an overall lighter appearance, and its abdomen lacks the triangular shapes. The abdomen of the common house spider looks more like marble or granite, or maybe both. I will make a video about the common house spider in the future. The triangulate cobweb spider is a creature of opportunity and eats many species of insect that wander into its web. Commonly taken insects include ants, isopods, flies, roaches, small crickets, etc. As mentioned previously, this spider will also eat other spiders that may become ensnared in its web. On one occasion, I was filming a brown recluse in an abandoned storage shed when it ran into trouble with a triangulate cobweb spider. The recluse had captured a wood cockroach, which was a bit larger than itself, and she was having quite a time dragging it to a safe place so she could consume it. While perhaps being a little overzealous, the recluse backed into the web of the cobweb spider. Unfortunately, I had stopped filming just before it occurred so I could reposition myself in that hot, cramped, creepy place. But the recluse was in an absolute panic to break free from the web while the triangulate steatota descended upon it. The cobweb spider sped toward the recluse and nearly grabbed the much-feared spider before it finally broke free. Although it escaped the jaws of death, the recluse dropped its prey, which then became dinner for the triangulate cobweb spider. The recluse could only watch as its hard-earned meal was taken and consumed. She approached the web a couple of times, but thought better of it and eventually gave up. It was clear to me that the web of the triangulate comb foot is a dangerous place for any small creature, no matter how scary they may seem. Okay, this scene here 
was located underneath a rarely moved china cabinet. If we'll take a look here, this is a uh, this is a uh, what you would see under the web of a steatoda species, most likely a triangulate cobweb spider. If you look here, here's the carcass of an isopod or sow bug. Here's another sow bug carcass. This, these brown dots and the white dots are the excrement from the spider. And you have the carcass of a young wolf spider here. Here's another young wolf spider carcass. There's another isopod over here. Not sure what that was. Hmm. This one looks like it may have been a brown recluse, but I'm not certain. I can't see it all that well. It's quite desiccated. But there it is. If you see these little brown spots like that underneath furniture, that's what that is. The excrement from a triangular cobweb spider or another steatota species. And then here's all its, all the things that got trapped in its web. And then if we look under the china cabinet, you can see the webbing there. And then there are eggs, there's one right there. And I think there's probably more in the corners. Yeah, there you go. Those are the eggs of a steatota spider. The eggs of a spider from the steatota genus. Most likely a triangulate cobweb spider. Okay, here is a location underneath the web of another triangulate cobweb spider. If you'll notice in the top left up there is the remnants of a brown recluse. And in about the top center is a, a deceased isopod. And then on the right is the remnants of a crane fly. So if you consider those insects or other spiders pests, then having the steatota species in your home is beneficial. Although some of the insects or other spiders that it eats are also beneficial. Obviously, these spiders inhabit homes, but also garages and sheds, storm cellars, wood piles, and probably just about any place that is sheltered from the elements. Steatota triangulosa can be found pretty much all over the United States, Mexico, South America, and a few other places around the world. It is native to Eurasia and was probably introduced to the New World. Egg sacs are loosely woven fibers that protect the eggs inside, which number about 30 in each sack. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Oh, hello. I'm Randy from Randy's Natural World. I hope you enjoyed the video on... Steatota triangulosa. Yes, yes, that's it. Today I'm pretending to be a scientist. Maybe I'm doing research on a five o'clock shadow, I'm not sure. But that's neither here nor there. I'm hoping to speak to those of you who haven't subscribed yet. Here's a list of reasons why you should. It's free. You can't beat that price. Number two, quality content. Always quality content. Number three, YouTube allows unlimited subscriptions, so there's no reason not to. Anyway, number four. Are you a procrastinator? There's no need to procrastinate. And I know what you're thinking. Randy, I'll subscribe when I get around to it. Well, here's your round to it right here. Round to it. So go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead. A wise decision.